Okay, um, just for the heck of it, I prepared this tier list of every weapon and style in GU, including Prowlers. And I'm gonna rate them. Uh, first of all, those are pretty much the best ones. Those are the, the really bad ones, but like in between pretty much everything is debatable. Um, this is not a not a list meant to represent the speedrun times of the game, since I'm not a speedrunner and you can just look up the times and there you go, that's your list. And this is supposed to be more like a general assessment of these weapons. Most of it is gonna be anecdotal. Uh, but for reference, I have a thousand hours in base gen, three thousand hours in GU. Uh, I've played every weapon over three hundred times, some more than a thousand, and I beat the game both solo and online. And yeah, this is just gonna be what my experience experience was with them and how I think they perform overall. Just when I pick them up and use them and what you can do with them. And I'm not factoring in just the pure damage or hunt time, but also what kind of utility they have, like how easy it is to keep up your damage or how helpful they're gonna be in uh, multiplayer hunts, like how, how good their status options are, for example. And that's gonna change it a bit from what you you would expect from a speedrun tier list. So without further ado, I, I'm just gonna start rating them, I think. Yeah. So maybe maybe I'll start with Greatsword. And for Greatsword, kind of indifferent towards some of them. I think we're skilled. Um, I think I'm gonna put this. I think I'm gonna put it in C tier. I think the the main benefits of this is it does a lot of damage. Uh, it has a long reach, and especially if you have if you're in a team, you you're gonna be getting all those level three charges out. The main problem I have with it is that it's inconsistent. Uh, a lot of monsters like don't let you charge through. Mm. A lot of a lot of matchups are just really bad for it, and especially in G rank where the monsters are very fast, it's, it it gets difficult to get uh, the strong charge set up on some of them. And you you just need to be able to know every monster move very well to even do well at it. I think it's its biggest detriment. And compared to Striker, I think it's a bit better. Uh, but I think Striker goes here too. I think the main reason I would say Guild is better is because I think the strong charge motion value is really good and having an extra hunter art doesn't do that much for it. Most of the time you'll see just both evaded arts and lines more. And I don't think lines more is too strong because the animation is very long and that is kind of offsetting the damage boost you get from it. And having evasion is nice over just sheathing normally, but it's not a huge time save and not that much utility, so I personally don't see much of a reason to use it over guild. Like even if you're just using crit draw, you can just use guild and it's gonna be almost as strong, except you also have the option to follow up with a strong charge. And that's kind of a shame uh, that it doesn't really have that amazing hunt hearts to make up for it. But yeah, I think they're both kind of mid. Fairly strong, but it's still ways off of this area, so... Uh, I might put... 
alchemy there as well. It doesn't really do anything different from striker. So except like the the hunter art uh, charges differently, and it has this this weird A move that nobody uses and that does no damage. So and the barrel isn't that great either. Maybe maybe worth considering in group hunts or longer hunts in general, but. Not that much of a reason to use it over striker, in my opinion. Mm. And yeah, where is Adept? Adept, yeah, I think in GU in particular, I'm gonna put it here. Uh, the reason I'm putting it so much higher is because I think the charge uh, counter does so much for it, and. With the ability to adapt evade, you have so much flexibility to um, evade after a charge, or like you can get way cockier with the regular charges you already have, because you're not stuck in the animation like with those, uh, or you don't have to resort to readiness either. You can just like counter this attack immediately and follow up with a very strong attack on its own. And the strong charge you get from it is also super strong. The upswing is not amazing, but it, it does a fair amount of damage and it's enough to stagger most monsters so you can follow up with a, a strong charge afterwards. So that alone is incredibly good and worth putting it way higher than the other ones. Uh, Ariel is actually weaker than the other ones. I would not put it here, because the reason is, I think people underestimate the damage it does. While it, it doesn't do as much as a charge level, charge level 3, but it also charges faster, it doesn't need focus, it benefits from aerial, uh, from, from the vault skill, uh, from airborne, and Depending on the matchup, the, the evade can be very good. I, I don't think it's amazing solo in particular, but it, it's it's very good on online in some cases. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I think the motion value is too low to put it any higher, but it's not as bad as like this area where some people would put it. I think the main problem why this one isn't used in speedruns or some have a very mixed experience with it is in particular that the vault is kind of inconsistent. You're not gonna pull it off every time and sometimes you hit bad zones, but if you can if you can manage that you you will get decent results with it. And yeah, that brings us to Vela and oh boy. This one is our first S tier because it's just incredible. Like this thing has no weakness. Like the the supposed weakness of Valor style is you give up a hunter art and you have to stay in Valor or charge it up, and that's the that offsets the extra damage you get while being in it. But the thing with Valor Greatsword is not having Valor isn't that big of a deal if you're spamming draw attacks with a uh, crit draw setup or you can just like do the regular charge with a valor charge and that fills up like half the bar which is just so much and it's so easy to fill and also the it, it's it's very easy to stay in it and also the the lost hunt hearts that don't hurt it because I don't think the Greatsword Hunter Arts are that great. Especially Moonbreaker or uh, Ground Slash, like they are pretty much worthless. And yeah, like the only one you would kind of want to use it uh, use on this is Lion's Maw, but if you're running a crit draw set, chances are you're already using Black Axe and have a Sheath Sharpen Charm, in which case you, you don't even need readiness, so you can use it if you want. And the main reason this is so OP, main reasons more like uh, 
uh, first of all, the, the damage. You, you get 112 motion value on a crit draw, which is 12 motion value more than all the other ones. You retain the strong charge. It's nerfed to 112, but it's still incredibly strong. Uh, the, the draw charge goes out faster, and you can follow up with a Valor Sheath, which makes it incredibly defensive. You can just like charge at a monster, and even if it attacks, you can just Valor dodge out of it immediately. Extremely good, in my opinion. Um, moving on to Longsword. Uh, where do we have Guild? Guild, 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 guild. There we go. Uh, where am I gonna put it? Somewhere around here. I think I might be fine putting it slightly above Greatsword. I think it probably is slightly worse in terms of time attack. May or may not be true, I haven't looked it up, but I think it's overall more consistent and easier to use and mm, there's, there's just not much to say about it. It's a decent DPS weapon with decent mobility. The hunter arts are incredibly good um, but that's also the main reason why I'm gonna put striker over it uh, because Gil just has two of them. Uh, to be fair, it does have the the fade slash, the sideways fade slash, and the follow up, which makes the spirit management easier. But it's overall not necessarily better. There are some matchup that uh, matchups that really benefited, and that I would gladly pick guild over striker. But overall, I think there's less monsters that benefit from it than there are monsters that benefit from an extra hunter art, which is why I'm gonna put this one a tier higher. It's not a huge difference, but it's there, and in my opinion, noteworthy enough. Uh, for Adept, I think I might put it right here next to Striker. Uh, the reason is that it has a different niche, it's similarly strong, but for different reasons. Uh, you give up Hunter Arts, which is a shame, but since there's the Rust Splitter, you're not uh, you're not locked into uh, using Readiness. So you can use Sakura Slash just fine, if you want that. Or if you really want that, Spirit Slash or Crit Juncture. Uh, an Unhinged Spirit or a Crit Juncture. And... But I don't think there's much of a reason to, because this one doesn't have problems with with a spirit gauge. And the main reason you want to use Sakura Slash is because you want to get to red immediately. And it's, depending on the monster, relatively easy to upkeep. Some ba some matchups are kind of shit for it, but overall I think it performs really well. Even in GU where most people will just use Valor. Um, Ariel, on the other hand, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, yeah, this this one goes all the way down here. I think it's really bad. Uh, the reason the reason is that it just has nothing these can do. The what you get by uh, w the what you get from it is an aerial spirit slash that combos into the spirit slash finisher but the setup is really jank because the f the initial setup requires you to do the full combo after a vault and not just the 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 last three slashes so until you even get white you're gonna be wasting a lot of time and even when you're in red this is just really bad because you're giving up hunter hearts and you, you don't get much in return like Adept. Adept gets a very good co a counter spirit slash that does a lot of damage and that's that's the reason why it's so good. And Ariel, you have to vault at the monster so it's less flexible than an Adept dodge. Uh, you give up an evade which is annoying on Longsword. And the main problem with a 
with a vault itself. It just doesn't justify being uh, itself being a vault because you you're just gonna jumping you're just gonna jump at the monster and it, unless it's like a Xenogre or something, you're gonna be hitting shit zones on the back. And even even if you're like very good at aiming in the air, like it's it's inconsistent as hell. You're not gonna be hitting the weak spots with it very consistently. And that's the main reason I I would drop it down here. It just gives up everything that makes Longsword good and gains not anything noteworthy in return. Alchemy, I think, yeah, it goes somewhere here, somewhere here. I think it's worse than Striker because you you don't get the the counter boost from it, and I think the barrel is more or less a waste of time. Uh, the combos are also kind of weirder, so it's just it just feels like a worse version of it. Um. And Vela, that's that's the one everyone loves. I I can't justify not putting it here because it, it's simply the best Blade Master weapon in speedruns, and even outside of it, it's very good. It's just doing a lot of damage. It has a lot of counter. Uh, it has a lot of possibilities. Like you can counter with it so much. It, it's it's so dumb. And you do so much damage if you if you hit the if you hit, time the counters right and follow up with a spirit slash. Uh, I think some things I want to note that kind of offset it, which isn't to say that it belongs anywhere down here. It's just because it is that strong. But I think some some aspects of it leave something to be desired, which is a you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to be in danger to benefit from it. So, if you mess up the counter timing, you're gonna be tanking a hit. You're not just gonna be like, you're not just gonna be away from the monster and just with an attack. You're, you're gonna tank for it. And the other issue is the the Vela gauge itself. It's really difficult to hold and onto. And not just that, it it takes a while to fill up with this weapon. And if you're not if you're not very aggressive, you're gonna lose a lot of it. And outside of that, this thing does no damage; it loses everything. But provided you can stay in Vela, it's incredibly good. And yeah, like everybody will tell you about this. Um, Sword and Shield, I think. Mm, I think where, where's Guild? There's Guild. I think I would put it somewhere here. I think it's main reason to not put it higher than Striker Longsword or Adept Longsword is because it doesn't do as much damage, even if you're like good with it. In return though, I think a Sword and Shield in general, it has pretty much some of the best hunter arts in the entire game, along with along with Longsword, so it's very useful to uh, use all of them. Especially Chaos Oil. Chaos Oil is pretty much the one of the most ridiculous hunter arts in the game. Uh, I think Guild also has a very flexible moveset, and it's just very versatile in general. You, with the oils, you can do so much. You can break, you can stun, you can just stack damage and you can even if you're not stunning you can exhaust the monster uh, with chaos all you can sharpen it just does everything for you and makes this weapon very aggressive and very useful overall i think guild i would put it here because if i put it higher it doesn't have enough damage but if i put it lower i, I think that doesn't it doesn't perform that badly. Like even with a somewhat low damage, you can do so much with it. You have a very high upkeep, and it's just gonna be incredibly useful no matter what. Even if you if you're fighting monsters like Devil Joe, where you can't really reach good zones, you can do things with it, uh, like trip him or break parts. And even if you're just sniping the 
the zones with uh, when they lower, like the head, you can just still do, do decent damage with some moves, like the like the spin slash. Uh, but I would put Striker over it, because having an extra Hunter Arch just does so much for it, while it doesn't really give up anything useful. The, the back wall, uh, the back uh, step charge does a lot of damage, but it also wastes some time, so it can be skipped. It doesn't really, really do much to have it. It's nice, especially if you're like doing evade setups, where you're like using it to evade. That can be very useful, but other than that, it's pretty much and guild is pretty much inferior to a striker, which is why I would put that higher. I definitely think striker sword and shield is more consistent and more useful than great sword, so I would also put it over that. Um, Adip, Adip sadly gets the end of the st the short end of the stick. It's not sure if I'm gonna put it here or here. The main problem I'm, I'm gonna put it here. I think S and S overall is good, but the main problem is this thing doesn't really have a good damage combo. It loses the back uh, the backstep charge. While it can't do the backstep, the the uncharged one doesn't do that much damage and it also loses the A idle combo, so you're gonna be shield bashing with this and the shield bash kinda sucks compared to the idle A. And also, you're giving up Hunter Arts, which, as previously mentioned, is a big deal because the Hunter Arts on Sword and Shield are so good. And the Adder counter is nice, but compared to Aerial, it's just worse in every way. Like, you can't use it on command. Uh, bo both are meant to dodge, but the adept one takes longer to execute, so I don't know. I I don't really see a reason to put this any higher. It's it's the worst sword and shield style because it doesn't. The counter is nice, but it doesn't justify any of the disadvantages, uh, which is why I would put it so low. Whereas Ariel, I think is fair to put here. I think it's uh, it's pretty much better adept in this case. It still gives up the Hunter Arts, which is why I'm gonna put it below Striker, but it gets a Vault, and it's one of the best ones in the game. And it also doesn't give up too much. You have, you still have the Backstab Charge, so that's gonna be your main combo. And yeah, you, you don't even lose that much. Like some other weapons, like Longsword, they, they will have trouble evading something um, in some cases, but this one, this one's not one of them. Like even if you're not running chaos oil, you can use round force or something. It's just gonna be very useful overall. Uh, also noteworthy, this is pretty much one of the best things to use with death grip. So you can spam mount, KO, and para, and traps if you use uh, pro trapper. So this is just incredibly good in some cases. Um, for alchemy, I think, uh, where is it? Uh, I think it has, not sure if I'm gonna put it here or here. Mm, I think 300 hearts justifies it being somewhere here. I think the main issue with it is its combo is like one hit uh, shorter than striker and you need a reason to use it. If you If you're not gonna use any barrel then it's just gonna be flat out worse than striker but on longer hunts you can make some use out of it you can get some earplugs you get the the whetstone that charges your hunter arts uh, you can yeah it's i don't know you can you can use sp arts on that but like other than that the, the benefits aren't huge but they, they they can be justified using Overstriker at times. And Vela, I think Vela, I would love to put it higher, but because it's the most fun style in the game, but it's just not good enough. Like having a Hunter Art, even even if you have the the very useful backflip, it takes some time to execute. The damage isn't super high, and 
you're giving up a hunter art. That's the main issue, really. But aside from that, I think if you the, the the main benefit from this, in my opinion, is that you get the inherent Vela iframes, which also apply to the backflip, and that's just gonna make a lot of hunts way easier. It takes a while to charge up Vela, but you also don't lose anything important outside of it. So, no matter if you are in Vela or outside of it, it's solid, but in Vela it has a really nice use, being very agile and having iframes on pretty much everything. So, it's more of a defensive style, and maybe, and in my opinion, very good against some annoying monsters like say Barrioff. So it, it has its niche. It's just not incredibly strong. That's that's why I'm gonna put it in here mid here. Um, dual blades I think dual blades are a fair bit better. Uh, I think yeah, dual blades are very good. The main issue with these is that it doesn't really have that they don't have any niche. Uh, it's gonna be more clear when I talk about the next two, but uh, overall, I'm gonna just say a few of our things about uh, dual blades. I think their damage is really good in this game. You have a lot of good weapon options. Some of them, like Veld Strikes or Laggy Duels, they don't even need any sharpness skills, so that's pretty useful. Uh, the damage output is just really high, uh, the mobility is great, and yeah, those are the main the main issue with duels is it's not the damage output isn't here, but and also the the reach isn't here. Like it doesn't have a lot of upwards reach, so it has some matchups where it kind of struggles. But aside from that, it's just overall very strong weapon. Um, and these are the reason. These are pretty much the reason why I think Guild kind of struggles. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put it in A, but well, that's like low A or high B. Don't think that matters that much. It's stronger than Guild because the adept counter is just so dumb. You you could just spam B and you win the game, and that alone makes it a very useful weapon. Even if its damage was trash, it, it would be a decent weapon sim purely for players who struggle. And that alone is a huge asset for it, but the main disadvantage is it doesn't have as many hunter arts, and dual blades hunter arts are incredibly strong in GU, so it's it's a detriment that would, I would justify uh, I would say it justifies it not being an A or S tier, but the utility is insane on this. Like you can just chill anywhere. You can just like stick to the weak spot the entire hunt and not be in any danger at any point. You can just dodge cancel out of everything. You get iframes until the whole animation is over during which you can also chain the next dodge. So you're basically invincible the entire hunt. And that makes it very strong in my book. Uh, the reason I'm gonna put Striker a bit higher is because you don't lose anything important provided you use dash chooses. Um, the thing is, the hunter arts are very good on this. With Adept you kinda lock to either Readiness or Volsmore or just but depending on the weapon, you, you you just need one of them. You, you can't just use one of them. And I think Striker has the benefit of using two, and not just two, it can use three of them. Um, the reason why I put it over Guild is because Geo just lets you farm dash shoes like crazy, so there's never a reason to not just pop a dash shoes and stay in demon mode the entire time. So the detriment, the supposed detriment of this weapon is pretty much gone. Uh, the only issue is if you get hit a lot, you, you're gonna have to play the, the entering demon mode animation. And that's 
pretty much its biggest problem. But it's one you can just avoid if you're if you're getting good at it. So not a big deal in my opinion. Uh Alchemy on the other hand, where is it? Oh wait, let's let's talk about this one first. I think this one is a fair bit worse actually. Um it's just worse adapt. Like the area combo isn't terrible, but it's not nearly as beneficial as the adapt boost, uh, the adapt uh, benefits, and you're giving up a hunt heart, which puts it below guild in my book. It's just, it's just troublesome to not, to not have, uh, to have the the demon mode and uh, not a hunt heart an extra hunter art and also you, you're giving up the evades for an, a vault which isn't great in this game anyway. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe, maybe here. Not sure if I would put it in D tier because I'm not sure if it's worse than Adept Duels. I uh, Adept Sword and Shield. I, I don't think it is. So I'm gonna put it here. It's also not worse than this one. But it's worse than all of these, so yeah, I th I think it's somewhere around here. Um, for Vela, I don't have much positive to say about it. It kind of sucks. The main issue, mm, the main issue with this, is that you just that. Compared to Striker, you're pretty much locked outside of Demon mode until you're in Valor mode, and uh, in which case you get it all the time. But use Striker and pop a dash shoes, and you, you get pretty much the exact same thing. The only difference is this one has two less Hunter Hearts. It takes forever to charge up. Like this is probably the main reason why I don't like it. Like it it takes so long to get into Valor. If it were, if it was easier, like with greatsword, this might be decent. Like it has the weird sharpness counter, which is nice, but you shouldn't make sharpness dependent on it anyway, because it's not as good as readiness or consistent. And I don't feel the counter is really that useful on it. I mean, if you want a counter, this one has it, and it's like ten times better. And you don't need to be in valor, and you also don't need to have this very unforgiving timing and you also don't eat stamina with it and you don't have to charge it up and it's just so many things that speak against it. Um, similar thing with alchemy. I think uh, it's maybe better than Valor because it doesn't need charging up but it doesn't have the spin to win forward attack and that alone is a big problem to me because it's it's one of the main ways to close gaps to monsters and in a game where fights are so hectic and so fast it's a very big deal. The alchemy barrel isn't really a huge benefit for it. You want to be in demon mode and just hit the monster the entire time so you're never going to be you're never going to be using it and you just give up too much for it. Even with the Hunter Hearts, which are really good, it's just a very bad moveset and it just ruins your combos and it's just very cumbersome to use. There's essentially no reason to not use Striker over it and that's the main problem with it, really. Um, hammer. Hmm. Uh, where do I put you? I'm not sure if I put it here or here. I think it, it goes over Aerial Greatsword, but I don't think it goes here. The main reason is that mm, even though even though Hammer is kind of strong, provided you can hit the monster, it's not strong enough. Like. Its motion values are good, but the problem is in GU. 
the monsters are too fast and you don't have great hunter arts to make up for it. And the whole reason it was so great in older games was because the monsters could be doing some kind of bullshit anywhere and you could just be charging up your super pound while they were doing it, wait up for the for a good moment moment and punish them and then triple pound the face. And this kind of rhythm is very difficult to pull off in, against some monsters in GU because they simply don't give you the room to super pound or even the time to charge it up properly. Even if you do it, like compared to other weapons like duels, it doesn't really get anything compared to older games. Like Sword and Shield gets the oils, which are incredibly good. The Hunter Arts are incredibly good. The styles have very good benefits. And I can say that about pretty much all of these, except for Greatsword, which kind of suffered from it. But considering it was a top tier weapon before, it still gets away with it, whereas I think Hammer doesn't. It just doesn't do enough damage, or it's too difficult to use in some places to really make great use of it. Um, the the thing with it, the the benefit of it is you don't need razor sharp, so you can stack more damage on some of them and get really high raw. But even then, like I feel having impact zones aren't as good as cutting zones in this game, and just having a weapon you need to charge up is, and anticipate some very specific moves is very punished into you. Whereas like these weapons can just stick to the weak spots no matter what the monster does. Hammer kind of struggles and it's very RNG dependent. Um, I wouldn't put Striker lower than it because even though the Hunter Arts aren't great, uh, this one has a uniquely stronger Super Pound. I think it's something like 15 motion values or something in exchange for the Gold Swing. Uh, the third pound actually has 60 motion value, so it's not that much worse compared to the gold swing, but still, it's still bad. Like you're losing like a third of your damage of it, but it's slightly faster to execute, and the super pound gets about half of it in return. So if your ratio between super pounds and gold swings is about two to one. It's gonna be better. And also, the charge time's way faster on it, so you can use it more more often and easier. And the extra hunter art, while it's not amazing, it, it, it does help. It's nice, because Spinning Meteor was buffed in GU, so it's actually good, and having both the evade arts is very useful. On a on a weapon that struggles with mobility. Uh, about adapt, I think it's similarly strong. It has a different niche. It's more about countering, but it can do decently. It's just not amazing. Uh, similar to Ariel, I think. I think Ariel Hammer. It's a fair bit worse than the other ones, but not terribly so. I think it's more of a multiplayer weapon, honestly. Mm, not sure if i put it above Vela duels. The main, the main reason I don't think it's amazing is because you're simply not gonna be having all the moves of the other ones. Mm. And I think, I think it gives up the super pound which Adept doesn't. I think Adept gives up the uppercut, uh, which isn't too bad, whereas the Super Pound is kind of a big deal. But regardless of that, you're not going to be using it too much. You're going to be using it to spam Ariel, and the damage is very meh, but the KO is very good. The mount damage is very good because you're hitting twice, and with a fairly high motion value attack too. So, it has its uses, but it's the, the the damage is really the main reason why why I wouldn't put it very high. Uh, Vela Hammer, on the other hand, it gets a lot in return for its different move set. Like I think this this one has some of the highest damage potential, 
the only issue is Vela is very difficult to use on it. Mainly building it up. I think the the X go swing you get for like charging it up is very slow. The damage is very good, but it's incredibly slow to charge up. And you need to hit like three or four of them. And not like a GS charge where it's only two of them. So that offsets its potential quite a bit. If it was easier I would have no trouble putting it somewhere in C or B tier, but it's just too inconsistent. And also online you'll be knocking away everybody near you. Like every attack is a super pound or an uppercut, so you're gonna be sending everyone flying. But in return though, you get very high motion value attacks, very 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 good KO damage and your combo is also very useful. It's something the other ones just don't compete with because you can just like charge, charge, charge and pretty much evade with the with the iframe Vela iframes or with the Vela sheath and keep charging. And it actually outcompetes something like Striker in some scenarios. The main difficulty is just using it. It's very cumbersome, very inflexible, and that's that's really the whole reason I wouldn't put it any higher. Alchemy, Alchemy is actually very good on Hammer. I would put it over Guild even. It's probably worse than speedruns because they might actually use the the charge after the gold sw go swing enough to benefit from it or to cut that time down. But I think for most players it's not gonna be a big deal. You lose the spin to win which sucks balls and nobody should use ever so that's not a big loss and you lose the ability to charge after gold, sw gold swing so that is probably the main issue with it but it's not a huge deal at all. Like even if you want to reset your combo and you don't have you could just roll out and could and just start over an X combo. It's it's gonna be good enough anyway. And you get a lot in return. You get an extra hunter art, you can make earplugs, you can charge your hunter arts with a with a whetstone faster. And yeah, you can use SP arts on it just fine because you're gonna have three of them and you only use readiness and uh, consistently often that you need the low cooldown. So you can put all the other ones on SP if you want. And that just makes it very consistent and very useful overall. It's just not not in this category yet because it has the same problems as all the other ones. Mainly the damage and low mobility. And yeah, now we're getting into hunting horn and honestly I don't know how to rate this because it sucks solo. It's like gun lens bad, but on the other hand it's insanely strong online. So you get this weird disparity that you can either regard it as incredibly strong due to the buffs or incredibly weak because it itself doesn't have a lot of damage potential. But honestly, I, w I would put it I would put it somewhere here. I would put it somewhere here. Because it's... I can't justify uh, the the damage loss in solo because you're gonna be you're gonna be clearing anything with it just fine but hop online and it becomes one of the strongest weapons in the game. And I think that justifies it being mid tier. I think it would be somewhere here if we're talking purely about online and it would be somewhere here if we're talking purely about solo but giving your whole team 20% extra damage, earplugs and whatnot is just too good to not put it there. On the other hand, Striker is fucking terrible, I don't know, there's no reason to use it. Like even if you just want to spam songs, it sucks balls. You, because for an A note you need to do the weird poke that has no damage and has no reach and can't be comboed into properly. And for the XA move you don't get the backslam which is very good, so 
you, you have to stick with a super pound, which takes a while to execute and it knocks everyone away. And the X combo also sucks, so this thing doesn't really have much going for it in terms of moveset. But the other thing is, you also don't benefit much from the from the hunter arts that much because most of them, the the, the Sonic Smash, Sonic Smash and Euphony kind of suck. Sonic Smash doesn't do much damage to justify using it, and Euphony kind of sucks in general because you want to buff everyone else and not just yourself. And so if you if you want to spam songs with it, you, you're gonna be out of luck with this. And you also have sucky combos and low damage, and your only benefit is that you can play songs at all, which is not enough to put it any higher, honestly. It's I think if we were to rate it kind of objectively, like how much damage you could do compared to guild, I would you could probably put it somewhere here, and but I think it's just too cumbersome. It has nothing it can do ten times better, so there's never a reason to use it. Um, on the other hand, alchemy I think it's pretty much better than that in every regard. I, th I still think it's worse than guild, but you. You still have similar issues where your combos kind of suck, but you're not stuck into the uh, into using the poke, and you're also not stuck uh, using only X notes for idle combos. So you have a lot more flexibility with notes. You also get the barrel, which can be justified using on this. And if you use you uh, if you use invigoration and harmonize, you can also spam songs and be fairly. Uh, fairly agile and fast about it, so to justify the, the lack of flourish or backslam. And that's really the, the main reason I think this is way better than Striker. It doesn't it does give up a few things over guild, but it also gets some in return. Maybe not enough to put it any higher, but you can use it. Especially in longer hunts, it's gonna be an asset. So that is pretty cool. Adept, where is it? Adept, I would put it below, next to guild. I think it's very good. Uh, trades the hunter art for essentially better ways to play songs. Like you also give up the flourish, but the counter thing where you do the triple note is insanely good for playing songs. Uh, it's also one of the weapons that really benefits from having a dodge. So. Using that is very useful. And also in GU in particular, you get the you get the fast uh, recital, which uh, uh, after an adept dodge, so that's pretty cool. Uh, for Ariel, I think it's where's Ariel? Where's Ariel hunting on? There we go. Uh, I don't know, it's not very good, but it's not that bad, it's just worse adept again, just I think the main issue is that with the aerial flourish you can only do it from an X move. If you could do it from any any note it would be way better, but the way it is it's kind of inflexible because even though it's functionally similar to Adept, it just gets less in return. Adept gets three notes from a counter, Ariel only gets two, Adept can combo into any note, and Ariel can only do from X notes, and it's just worse in every way, so it's not very useful. And Vela, oh boy, probably, probably could be getting shit for this, but it's bad. I don't like it. I think the forward X slam missing is a really huge problem. Charging Vela is very bad on it, and 
the new move you get is way too inflexible to use because you need to uh, initiate it through a different move, which severely limits what it can do. And other than that, you're just giving up moves, hunt hearts, and flexibility for just a glorified added counter. And again, in that case, you could just use Invigoration on Guild and have the same thing, except better and easier and more consistent. And there's really no re reason to use it, in my opinion. I think it's pretty bad. Um, moving on to lands. Oh boy. Guild lands. Where am I putting you? I think it's somewhere above the great swords. I think it's somewhere around here. I think it's good. The hunter arts are insanely strong, but the reason I won't put it higher is pretty much lies within striker. The comparison will make it very clear. This one straight up goes here. There's no reason it needs to be any lower because this thing... Boy! I have no idea what they did with this. I have no idea how they did not nerf it to shit from base gen. Because in base gen this is... it was the best weapon. The best weapon, hands down. And there's a reason for it. The charge finisher in Striker gets, I think, 67 motion value, and the tick, uh, the tick in front of it, usually does uh, 25. So that's just so dumb. Like, if you if you use Enrage Guard, so you get the 1.3 multiplier. You do as much damage as a fully charged greatsword hit with a tick and a charge finisher following it. And you can just spam the shit out of it. And it's so dumb. It's so fucking dumb. You, you can charge up your readiness in like three of them. And you could just pretty much use it from wherever. And compare guild to it where... You're losing, you're losing the ability to spam it. Uh, well, not losing the ability to spam it, but you're losing the better motion value. So it's not as worth worth it anymore. Uh, you do the weird third poke, which is not terrible, but also kind of pointless. And you lose the hunter art, which striker can just use both evade arts or corkscrew jab and um, enrage guard. And Enrage Guard is just the dumbest hunter art in the game. Like it's straight up the most broken hunter art in the entire game. Like the the charge time is low, the the uptime is extremely high, the damage boost from it is ridiculous, and you also get a counter move from it. The only issue is you need some setup and you need to know when to use it. But if you get it, it's so dumb. It's just so fucking dumb. It's just like a better Wolfsmore from, from Dual Swords. And just having like almost a hundred motion value on a spammable attack is just so fucking dumb. I can't stress how, how OP it is. And that alone puts it in S tier. Like this thing is agile. It has tons of damage. And it's just so dumb. Like, it's not even difficult to use, you just need to aim at the, the part you want to hit with the dash and then press X. And it just fills up your hunter arts so fast. I, I can't stress how, how OP this style is. It's, it's really in the ballpark of these two. It has no weakness, it has way too much damage. And yeah, it, it works against everything. Um, Adept though, uh, I don't like it. I I really don't like it. Some people say it's kind of good, but nah, fuck it, it sucks. I think the main issue is you're losing the R plus A counter. I think that is like the way, the way to go to initiate uh, the counter attacks. I think this would have 
been a great opportunity to like bring back the the base try third count uh, third poke counter and apply added blocks to it in which case this would be very good but the fact that you have to stop your combo and then idle and then block to even use it makes it extremely inflexible uh, not just that the, the counter damage also isn't high enough to justify it in my opinion you you're just gonna be giving up hunter arts for no reason like the the problem is with lands you need two hunter arts because readiness and enrage guard are pretty much the uncontested best hunter arts in the entire game and you always want both of them and just being locked to one is a big deal and then having not a very good move set is just it, it's not that bad but it's bad and I, I wouldn't recommend using it. Um, Ariel, on the other hand, I think it's decent for spam. Oh, I think it's decent for spamming Ariel. It's not amazing, but it's actually fairly good at doing what it's supposed to do, because it do actually does like the the multi-hit third poke midair and. You have some mobility by being able to forward jump with it, so you you're not locked into using the back ops like in other styles. So that actually gives it some flexibility, and you can also use Rust Razor Striker to. Uh, uh, wait, no, it's called Rust Razor Stinger, I think, the Rust Razor Lance to kind of offset the. Uh, the the lack of uh, readiness so you don't need to sharpen and can use enrage guard uh, it's not amazing but it gets the job done it's kind of in the ballpark as in the same ballpark as aerial greatsword it's somewhat undervalued but not strong enough to put it any higher and yeah vela um, I think it's better than Adept, but not by much. I think I think it has the same issue as Adept, mostly that it's janky. Its setup is too difficult to really use. It's too inflexible. It doesn't do enough damage, and the the weird poke you double slash you get isn't strong enough. So not that great. Honestly, like I've heard some people say it's very good if you know how to use it, but I've tried it so much and it I just never get good results with it. I've just never been able to make it work. And that means you know move on to alchemy. I think alchemy it could be somewhere near guild. I think it has a lot of the same strength, but you get an extra hunter art, which is nice. Not necessary, because you only need two, but it's nice. But the main reason to not put it higher is because it's not striker. It doesn't have the finisher, and that's the whole reason to not put it lo higher. Like the finisher does so much for it, and makes it so OP, whereas this one doesn't have it. And that just limits what it can do. And other than that, it's just your standard alchemy. You can use the barrel if you use it or not. It doesn't really matter because it's not amazing, but it has some decent benefits. And it's just not better than guild, honestly. It's just somewhere around guild, but not amazing. And yeah, I think... I think I'm gonna cut it off here and continue in the second part because... This is already an hour long, and I don't want to make it too long at a time. So, I'm just going to record the second one a bit later.